Yeah, thank you, Erin, for this nice introduction. Um, on behalf of my co-authors, I will present today a collection of privacy and security concerns based on a long-term participatory design project of a neighborhood portal and related appropriation processes of a group of elderly project um, participants. During our participatory design project, we gathered insights about the elderly person's perceptions of their social and territorial boundaries and how these are linked to a path of self-direction, uh, of self-directed learning in order to master a tablet PC and internet applications. In our paper, we try to spell this out, how boundaries are negotiated in and across the physical and the digital worlds. And we also formulate some reflections on what this can imply for the design of the portal, as well as for the design of an environment for appropriation support for the elderly participants. Let me first give you a very brief um, overview of over the project context. The target of the overall project was to foster social awareness, social interaction, and informal help between the tenants of a housing complex in a local city quarter. And um, there was a special focus on, um, on a set on the development of measures which foster the elderly tenants' empowerment and autonomy in order to enable them to stay longer independently in their habituated living environments. The project is located in Dortmund. This is a large city in Germany um, and in a city quarter with rather low economic backgrounds. Our methodological approach is based on the concept of long-term design case studies formulated by Wolf et al. Um, with some modifications for working with the very target group we work with. A main aspect of the modification is that we have put a strong focus and invested a lot of time on the setup of a common space of thinking between our um, project participants and us as the research team. This means that we have developed and introduced measures to help the elderly project participants to become motivated as well as skilled to act as design partners in our project. The first months of the project thus revolved around getting to know the devices and the internet applications in a very slow and in a very careful way and uh, to give them the time to explore um, these new worlds in relation to their everyday life conducts. We have written about these processes and these measures elsewhere. Um, here in summary, um, I would like to say that on the basis of qualitative and action research-based um, research design, we have conducted over three years more than 70 bi-weekly workshops and accompanied by several interview series. And over these three years, we really held a close collaboration with about 15 um, elderly participants. We met with them every two weeks in their local community center. and. Um, yeah, put also a special focus on a welcoming atmosphere. So we always had a nice coffee and homemade cake there. So that was really important that they felt, um, that they felt good in their technology endeavor. Um, central aims of these activities were that we wanted to facilitate their learning and appropriation paths of tablet PCs and internet. And these activities then, in the next step, served as the grounding for the people to become partners in our PD process. So, now, in the course of these workshops, topics repeatedly emerged which can be allocated to the current privacy discourse. We correspond to a scientific discourse which conceptualizes privacy and security as relational and dynamic concepts. From this viewpoint, the management of personal information is inherently linked to its spatial and its social cultural contexts. In addition, context-dependent social norms play a pivotal role. Uh, and that people constantly negotiate and balance out their personal territories in respect to these perceived um, social norms. These social and relational perspectives on privacy open up a social construct constructivist stance on how the elderly manage themselves and their relationships. And as we will see, this is true for both attitudes and practices in the physical as well as in the digital world. 
Let's start with looking at the physical environment. Here we learned that the own flat in the perception of the people is really a kind of a sanctuary. And uh, this in different dimensions. First, certainly uh, being able to lock the door makes me feel safe. But the own flat is also a place where they can feel immune from what other people think of them. This uh, image of the self and how others see me, this was an ever recurring theme in the workshops. Um, we learned that presenting themselves in a the neighborhood was some, sometimes linked to feelings of low self-esteem and distress, in many cases based on some long trajectories of unemployment and um, being poor due to a low pension. So they expressed fears that others might look down on them due to their situations. And this was for some uh, re a reason to only interact very closely with just a few of the neighbors in this uh, neighborhood. Another facet linked to this theme of images, uh, image of self and image of aging was that um, in, the, in the beginning, um, some women, they didn't want to be seen with the tablet PCs on the, on the, on the street, in the public. In their perception, this, this wasn't something for the elderly. So elderly people, they should not, uh, they, 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 they would not have the need and no legi legitimation to get these devices and to get learning support. And they thought that uh, we should rather put our resources in helping, for example, children with, with the technologies that would be more important than looking after the elderly. However, after a while, um, when starting to engage in practices which were meaningful to them, with the tablets and internet applications, they started to revise their uh, specific image of how an elderly person should behave. So um, from this, we, we carefully concluded that low self-esteem and certain images of self and of aging uh, and perceived norms of an appropriate behavior had an impact on how the elderly people constructed their social relationships at the interface of their private and public spheres. spheres. Another collection to mark borders of a personal territory is the handling of the postal mail. Every tenant um, in the city quarter has, has an own mailbox, certainly, and this mailbox is located in the hall of the tenement where they live. And um, then sometimes it happens that the post uh, man or post woman um, just piles all the individual letters on a shelf in the hall, and then the tenants have to come and, and look through these piles and then have to pick out their own letters. Um, that in this case, all other neighbors in the house could see the mail, was, that was mm, seen differently by different people. On the one hand, there was the opinion that the mail itself would not be of a certain critical content, and that the direct neighbors in the same house knew anyway about the own living conditions. Others, in contrast, they did not really feel comfortable with their mail being visible to all other neighbors in that house where they lived, and um, one lady stressed the significance that the privacy of correspondence meant to her. Another facet in the context of postal mails is a feeling of uneasiness when receiving mails from senders they had not interacted with so far. So um, many of them um, are annoyed by the amount of advertising mails they frequent, frequently find in their mailboxes, and they cannot oversee the process of data collection by the advertisers. Um, one participant uh, told us then about her strategy to cut out her name and her address and her customer ID um, from the envelopes and catalogs before putting them into the public waste paper box. She did so to prevent her information from being used to the senders, to send, uh, from being used to send adverts. Um, interestingly, there were some differences in thinking about and feeling affected by adverts in the participants' email inboxes. Here, uh, some just ignored and deleted these mails. Others, however, were worried and did not know how to handle these mails. 
They kept them then until our next visit and asked us what the smells meant and how they should react. Now we turn to some insights on the participants' reactions in respect to the digital portal. A great fear at first was that criminals also use digital features to commit crimes against the elderly people. Besides these security concerns, they uttered awkward feelings when imagining that people they do not know personally in the city quarter would be able to read their postings and would be able to obtain information about them. They, however, stated that they could imagine to interact in the portal when being sure that, that one is aware about the audience, so who can see my posts. And we figured out together that besides to think in these certain circles of trust, there was also a differentiation of themes or of topics which could be shared with different groups of neighbors in different extents. From this, we developed the, 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 the design idea that um, they could mark groups of addresses on the basis of the single houses in the city quarter because uh, that, that matched somehow their perception of the people and their surroundings. So they, they often knew, well, this is uh, Mrs. X, mm -hmm. and she lives in house number five, for example. So that was a, a mental concept, how they looked at their neighborhood. And um, so um, you can, uh, unfortunately, it's not, not uh, very, very good uh, to see, but uh, we have, yeah, there are the, the, the single houses and then they could, can mark this, um, this um, post can be seen by the neighbors living in house one, two, three, and whatever. So, and, and we, we developed that with, with them together, this design idea. They liked it, they tested it and used it. So, however, here again, the handling and perception of the image of self and image of aging got important, also in this context. Um, so, and, and this has to do with their way of, of self-positioning. In the workshops, they often questioned if anybody would be interested at all in, in, uh, about what they had to say and to give for the neighbors and um, its representation in a digital portal. The portal thus raised thoughts of becoming visible in their city quarter in a different way than they were used to before the idea of this digital portal came up. Um, navigation and disclosure, or navigation of disclosure and exposure to the community in the physical environment had been bound up to this point by the notion of how an elderly tenant should behave in the quarter. Thus, some perceived the way they were represented in the portal now as being somewhat contradictory to their concept of how a modest and mainly withdrawn elderly person should live. In their eyes, it offended the social norm of modesty, which they upheld in their physical everyday surroundings. So, um, let me come to the conclusion. Um, in our research, we have seen that how elderly persons construct their concepts of data and digital data flows takes their departure in their familial physical experiences. The new form of visibility in the surrounding can lead to awkward feelings and also to contradictions in felt norms, uh, or norms the elderly persons hold up. However, we also see that a change or a shift in norms is, is possible and may take place when the engagement with the digital tools uh, is being perceived as a meaningful practice and a meaningful experience. I think our study, a study could demonstrate that privacy-related practices are inherently linked to the socio-cultural contexts of the living environment of our elderly target group. And finally, this demonstrates the high importance of accompanying design work with social learning environments, which in a sustainable way enable appropriation, negotiation, and learning. Also, or most importantly, when it comes to design for privacy and security. Thank you for your attention.
great. We have time for a few questions, if anybody has them. Um, so I can get started, Claudia. Great talk. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, you mentioned early on in terms of motivating your participants to feel kind of empowered as designers of mm -hmm. these technologies alongside of you. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit more about that, just kind of the progression that you saw over time mm -hmm. from the beginning where they were unfamiliar with these technologies to as they kind of moved on and became more comfortable. Did you see like an evolution in their you know, comfort around these privacy and security concerns, are they things that really changed over time or were they mm -hmm. things that stayed pretty static throughout the course of like the 70 different sessions? Yeah, yeah, thanks, that's a great question. So, um, yeah, we saw a great evolution uh, essentially until today because uh, we are not more in that project but the group still exists and they meet, they meet, still meet every two weeks and they found a substitute for us who, who helps them uh, in their with their endeavor with the with internet and so on. Um, in terms of um, a, a change of the perception of, of privacy issues, yeah, we, we also have seen, well, I have, I have given some examples already, so this, this feeling of embarrassment, strongly, a strong link to images of aging, the self-image, self-concepts, this is not, not nothing for older people, elderly women shouldn't be, what do people think of me? And then um, what was important for this shift um, of the, the, the perceived norms was that they took the devices in their everyday life. So um, this specific lady I have talked about, she, um, she had this birthday of her um, um, grandchildren, 18th birthday of her grandchildren, and she took her tablet and then she took, got it out and she took pictures of all. And then uh, the, the, her um, granddaughter and the friends of her granddaughter, they were really um, excited. So what, what is your granny doing? Your granny, she can operate this tablet. And, and, uh, and then she was like, well, I can send you the pictures. And they were like, wow. <laughs> so, and then that, that was um, very important for this lady So to, that she saw, well, they, they really encouraged me to do that, and, and my, my granddaughter is proud on me, so then I can also proud on myself, too. So, yeah, so this, this, the important thing about this um, is the long-term engagement in their daily practices, in their everyday practice, that, uh, that they can take the technology home, explore what, what does it mean for me, for my special interests, for my special needs. And then, um, yeah, when, when people start seeing the benefit in the usage, um, then things can change. Yeah. Okay. Um, the one other thing I wanted to ask in relation to uh, Amanda's paper that she just mm -hmm. presented. So she kind of proposed at the end of her talk a few ways that technology could kind of come into these independent living communities or communities of like older adults that are living together mm -hmm. and maybe play a role in facilitating their leisure activities. Do you think any of these privacy and security concerns that you guys have brought up here would directly impact that? Specifically the concerns that you've identified about like presentation to other people within their own community and the real concerns about like you know, who can see what I'm doing and what I'm interested mm -hmm. in, would that be kind of a, um, mm -hmm. a challenge to implementing these things? Mm -hmm. So I can see a, a very interesting linkage, uh, linkage between your um, study and ours in terms of uh, the focus on people living independently. So in, uh, in the privacy research, there is, a, there is uh, uh, some work or, on um, uh, this uh, privacy and security questions when it comes to smart, uh, smart home or smart health uh, monitoring devices and so on. Because in that case, the privacy intrusion issues, they become so visible at, at the beginning. And there is a lot of, um, or in home care context and so on. So there is a lot of um, research on that, but not, as in our two uh, studies, um, how do, do people start appropriating um, co uh, information and communication technology when they are still living on their own? Hmm? And when they do not have like caregivers or other people who, who help them. So they are on their own and, and um, you certainly also have to think about how can 
from a societal perspective, we, we um, implement um, measures that, all, that these people have opportunities to learn and so on. But yeah, in, in, this direct, uh, in this respect, I was really happy to, uh, to see your, uh, your talk uh, before me, and uh, it's very imp inspiring. So the, in, in respect to this very target group, we both are focusing. Yeah. Great, great. Let's thank Claudia.